Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. We're going to talk about six unusual vegetables that will be growing in our Milwaukee garden that you could grow too. As well as cucumbers, everything you need to know so you have a successful crop come this summer. And we're going to have the plant doctor, garden expert Melinda Myers, on the show. As well as your gardening questions and our gardening answers. Tell your garden friends that Garden Radio is on the air because it all starts right now. You are tuned in to the only vegetable gardening radio show in Milwaukee with your host, Joey Baird, who grew up in the country but now lives closer to the city, and Holly Baird, who has always been a city girl. Combined, they have over 25 years of gardening experience who believe in simple gardening practices. A gardener for all gardeners, founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where they created over 800 how-to garden videos to teach others how to grow more of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they discuss vegetable gardening and more. Ah, it is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether through those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, the radio tab on the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, social media, or anywhere in between, I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, best friend, gardening partner, and co-host, Holly Barrett. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for all things gardening, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now, 896 videos, short and long format, with a new additional feature on the main page where you can get actual segmentations of this radio program in video and podcast form. So if you want a specific topic, you can just go click on it, listen to it, or download it, or, uh, and, and you got it right there. You don't have to watch the whole entire show. But if you want to download full shows, as well as in-studio videos of full shows, you can click under the radio tab on the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. And, people, and the way this all is possible each and every week are by great sponsors you'll hear throughout the show. Nasala Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Nasala is made in Wisconsin with your local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nasala Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more at nasala.com. And we want to remind you, anytime during the program, you can call in on the Ivy Organic Hotline with your gardening questions. Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. Again, that's 414-444-5250. And you can also email us at any time during the show or not during the show, at 3 o'clock in the morning, whenever you want, at twvgradio at gmail.com. Also, you can tweet us at any time at TW, hashtag TWVG. You can say hi. You can send us your garden pictures or your problems, and we will do... Uh, the best to get you the right answer, not an answer. Well, we had a great turnout this past Tuesday at Cudahy Public Library where we talked about maximizing your garden. Welcome to all of those individuals who are tuning in for the very first time. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, thank you. And we hope that you bring uh, take away information that will help you in your garden. As well as we had a very good turnout at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center this past Thursday, the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Program, where we concluded our spring speaking series on straw bale gardening. So that, that was... Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Worked and out very well. So we're not going to have any talks for a while, but if you are planning you know, to uh, come to the summer or fall, they're on our website. Well, well that uh, gives us an opportunity to take a moment to reflect on the importance of this weekend. Uh, it's a three-day weekend for many people. Many people took four days off. Uh, major sporting events are happening tomorrow throughout the world, but there is it's not just about sporting events and barbecues uh, and a three-day vacation from your work. That's right. So Memorial Day is a holiday observed on the last Monday of May, and it's honoring the men and women who died serving in the U.S. military. Originally, it was known as Decoration Day, and it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. So just important to think about the reason why we are enjoying our uh, our time off or our day on Monday. Uh, people who you never met, who didn't know you, who fought and gave the ultimate sacrifice to allow you and us to do what we do every day, and we take it for granted, and we are grateful for that. Let's get into the topic today, which is six unusual vegetables that we are growing in our Milwaukee garden that you can as well. 
Now, a lot of times, uh, for the average, and I, I, I don't like to categorize gardeners, and I try to be very vague with that categorization, many gardeners are weekend gardeners. they got a little plot in the backyard. They, they do a little work here and there. We're, I would say, in, in a different type of realm. Uh, 2,000 square feet, three gardens, uh, year-round gardeners. But whether you grow, you know, a couple pots of tomatoes and cucumbers or you grow a huge garden or you have a small uh, vegetable farm or something like that, either way, these are some things that you could possibly grow. Right. And and when it comes to uh, growing tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, cucumbers, okay, those are the the staples. But there are a a lot, a lot of vegetables that, one, we continue, Holly and I learn about every week, that other gardeners throughout North America are growing that do very good. Uh, That's how we came across the acas that that we've uh, grown in our garden. That's how we come across what we're going to talk about, the acons that we're growing in our garden. That's how we came uh, across the Jerusalem artichoke that we're growing in our garden. So let's go through the list here. Uh, So the first one, most of these are, if you save them, the seeds or the rhizomes, you can propagate them or regrow them the following year. The first one is a perennial, which means it'll come back year after year after year after year. Many people don't realize there's perennial vegetables, but this is one of them. It's Jerusalem artichoke also known as a sunchoke and it's it's a root crop related to the sunflower sunflower, but you eat the roots you don't eat the flower uh, and you it's a a less starchy root crop kind of looks like a really knotty potato it's recommended for those who have diabetes because it's less less starchy but again consult your physician before you consume well, anybody who, yeah. would, who would want to eat a less starchy root crop would would enjoy but, that. but again you've got to be cautious of what you eat and i want to put that warning out there right. uh you can still I, I there's some places where you can buy these online if you go to um you know the organic grocery store they may have them and you if they're organic you can plant them and uh, even in the fall, if you can get those from somebody who's harvesting them, uh, we cleaned our bed out, re- reseeded it because we didn't like the way it was growing, and they've all come back with a vengeance. So they get about, uh, they need mm, 150 days of full sun. They get 6 to 15 foot tall. You can grow them in a container. They will yield between 3 and 8 pounds per plant. And again, you can do a variety of different things. We put them in ro- a roast, and they get a really buttery, earthy flavor to them. You can stews. Uh, stews you can eat we them all. Um, so, like oh, uh, hash browns. Uh, hash browns yeah. with them. Those, are uh, good those, too. those work really well. And uh, you you can do a variety of things with them. Uh, but they're one of these pro- crops that you only harvest uh, what you want because they do go bad uh, a little quicker uh, because they're very short shelf life. So that brings us to yakans, which are kind of similar in a sense almost because they're not perennials uh, but they do they they're, do grow they're in the similar world. relation to the sunflower right and they originated in the andes south, mountains, in, the andes mountains in, in south america they look like a, a sweet potato almost because they get that that length and then they are tapered on both ends but they don't taste like sweet potatoes to me they taste like a less like a sweeter potato but less starchy yes and uh, these are uh, a, a tropical plant that do not overwinter you have to remove the roots at the time of harvest and there is a cluster called rhizomes that you uh, can overwinter in sand whether in you know we put them in the stairway of our attic which gets uh, keeps uh, tempered where it doesn't allow the plant to think it's warm it, it goes into dormancy if you have a small amount you can put them in the uh, uh, and damp sand in the bottom of the refrigerator if you came to some of our talks those were available and some of you did purchase those you can't again i dug i was working a bed yesterday that had some yakons in them last year and i was curious oh i wonder if i missed any i wonder if anybody's going to come up why well, i turned over a big uh, fork full of soil and there was a yakon there that was just sl- slime so they don't overwinter they can't overwinter at all here in zone five but we grow them very successfully there's a gardener they're in- also known as yucas so in in cooking some people refer to them as yucas uh, there's a guy in Manitowoc that grows them. There's a couple of people in Canada that grow them. Uh, you'll find them in uh, the Hispanic area in your grocery store occasionally in the frozen section. They'll have them peeled and frozen. So uh, they take they take a very long time. They take two hundred about almost two hundred twenty days to reach a mature state. And we start them uh, in February from the rhizomes, and we'll plant them out today. And then we'll harvest them after the first frost, whether that be October or November. And uh, they'll, they'll keep very well. We've done nice things with them. They're very good. So then we have a, a melon. It's a tiger melon. And they, that takes about 90 days. And, it, and we have the, 
The seeds here, they are... From M.I. Gardener. Yeah, from M.I. Gardener. They're, they're considered a rare seed, and, and if you're going to get these particular tiger melons, there are other companies that sell rare seeds on the Internet. Those seeds are almost 4 to $5 for the same quantity that you get from M.I. Gardener for $0.99. Cents. Uh, so, yeah, they get, exactly. They're, they're one pound. They look like uh, yellow, uh, orange uh, softballs with dots of yellow on them, and they're called a they're, tiger melon. Right, and they're actually uh, cantaloupe. The cantaloupe variety, so they, um, yeah, so they, they're definitely something different. A uh, one pound in size, they'll take ninety days to reach a mature state. Uh, you can let them sprawl on the ground. Uh, uh, they call them a, a brilliant fire red zigzag stripes on them. So based on your core, uh, color or you know how, how you look at color. Uh, it's got a white flesh inside, and it's a mild-tasting small fruit. And they can produce several uh, uh, dozen uh, fruits per uh, vine. And they're, they were from um, – they're an heirloom that came from American uh, markets located in the mountain valleys. Romanian. Mo- mo- uh, Romanian markets. Armenians. Armenians. Mm-hmm. Armenians. Um, so that we have, uh, so we're going to do that. That's an exciting one that right. we're excited about. Now here's and that can be planted right now. You can get the seeds. You can even plant them in the next week. They're totally fine. Another one that you want to wait probably till the Fourth of July weekend to plant so you have a fall harvest are blue shelling peas. Yeah. So they are. There's obviously peas that you're going to shell. And as opposed to eat the the pods. Now they are actually blue or purple in color. We're very familiar with uh, green peas. Uh, if you allow these, you can harvest these early for snow peas and eat the pods, or you can wait till they mature and eat the actual bean or the the pea inside of it. Uh, they take about seventy day. Uh, let's see, uh, yes, fifty to seventy days to reach maturity. Uh, they can be a, a tall plant, three four foot tall, and uh, they have a bluish purplish pod on them. And uh, they and they put, prefer full sun. Yeah, very unique crop, and that's all these seeds, uh, excluding uh, the Jerusalem artichokes and the Yacons, you can get at MI Gardener. Another one is the Golden Midget Watermelon. We all like growing watermelons. Some of us are much more successful than others at growing them. This is a smaller variety, a three-pound variety watermelon that has a yellow f- uh, skin to it. And we found that growing the smaller watermelons is successful for us. Oh, if you're in Alabama or Georgia, you can get away with growing a 20, 50, 60 pound watermelon. Here in Wisconsin, we just don't have that longevity or that heat that we need, in our opinion, to successfully grow. Now, some of you may be very excellent watermelon experts and grow very large watermelons. We just can't seem to make it happen for us in our garden. So we reverted to the midget watermelons here that uh, should do very well this year. Right. And so they are, as I mentioned, they're yellow. They have a a pink flesh inside and they're nice and sweet so um and the nice thing about growing your own melons is they they have a more tense sweetness was what i've noticed and the final one is rainbow carrots we all grow orange carrots but you can grow rainbow carrots and there's a variety of different colors in which you can can uh, grow purple red snow white uh lunar white uh greenish yellow oranges uh but we're all con- all used to the orange carrots that we see in the grocery store and there's a kind of a reason why the orange carrots and how they get developed so what what was the what's the story between how the orange carrots came to be and why they're so popular in the commercial markets now compared to the or or the the multicolor ones that we normally see sure so there's a town in southern france called uh, arasio it was founded by the romans in 35 bc and it was pronounced uh, arena it's the that they it became orange once the french it, it's a it, it, it's all based on a king i believe yeah okay it's based on the king and <clears throat> so at the time the dutch were known as carrot farmers and they grew carrots traditionally of hues of purple yellow and white in the 17th century, a strain of carrot developed that was contained higher amounts of beta carotene, and that's the first orange carrot. Dutch farmers started growing the new orange carrots in honor of William of Orange. Okay, that's the king. He's the William of Orange, mm-hmm. which translates from France. And the traditional, more colorful carrots were tossed aside because of these new fashionably orange carrots. Um, so politics and fashion. Yeah, uh, kind of a, a trend in modern society. So yeah, but the colorful carrots are fun. Yeah, and, and they're you know y- y- children are, are great uh, 
uh, people to have around when you harvest carrots because, well, anybody really, because you don't know how long they are. And uh, the kids all think carrots are orange. So when you pull a, a purple carrot out or a red carrot out or a white carrot out, they are absolutely amazed. And you have to explain to them that carrots come in a variety of different colors. Right. So we hope that those six different crops that uh, we are growing, unusual crops, Drew's martichokes, yacons, purple pod peas, the tiger melon, the watermelon midget, and the multicolored carrots might be something that you will look into either for this gardening season or next gardening season. When we come back, we're going to talk about everything you need to know when it comes to growing your cucumbers, and we'll tell you about some of the 10 varieties in which we are growing in our summer garden this year. Have a gardening question? Email Joey and Holly at twvgradio at gmail.com. Hot Shed Mill, 125 years of experience producing stone, ground, organic flour, and cornmeal made from premium quality whole grains. Family-owned company, continual standards that are non-GMO, organic at the highest safety levels, offering a wide variety of flours, pasta, baking mixes, flaxseed, and more, even kosher and gluten-free options. Found at most local grocers like Woodman's. For more information and recipes, visit HodgsonMill.com. That's H-O-D-G-S-O-N-M-I-L-L.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Do you have a little space to grow? Check out Greenstock Vertical Gardens at GreenstockGarden.com. Greenstock is engineered to grow with its innovative space and water saving design. You can grow vegetables, flowers, herbs, and even strawberries in just two square feet of space. Grow up instead of out. Perfect for the porch, patio, or deck. Grow up to 30 plants in a small space. Greenstockgarden.com has everything you need to grow in the littlest of spaces. Proudly made in the USA. For more information and to purchase, visit greenstockgarden.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non vegetarian specialties 1901 east north avenue milwaukee 414 and online at beansandbarley.com i want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs i want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community all i want is a garden center that truly values their customers it seems like everyone is selling plants these days but i'm having a hard time finding quality i take pride in my garden so i want my garden center to take pride in their products where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Halle Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, now with over 896 videos, short and long format, all to help you, all for enjoyment and educational, and just uh, watch somebody garden if you want. Well, when it comes to to watching something that is coming to your neighborhood in just a few weeks, you can get fresh uh, peaches and blueberries drove right to your neighborhood, and you just got to go pick them up from treeripe.com. Right, so if you like fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from tree ripecom They have beautiful, tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries. If you're sick of bland, mealy peaches, peaches and lackluster blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. For location and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They have locations all over, including up Iowa, Upper and Lower Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around. 
and you can go to their website and click on the uh, there's a tab there and it will show you all the listings of where they're going to be and when they're going to be here and how many times they're going to be here it's a great uh, great product that they have end of june so about a month away yeah. so let's talk about cucumbers because most of us uh, i don't have talked to too many people and the first thing i ask do you like cucumbers well, most people like cucumbers in some form or fashion whether cucumber water pickling them making pickles out of them or eating them fresh some people also juice them well we grow a variety of different cucumbers in our garden we will be planting them today we have 10 different varieties that we grow and to some of you that might seem excessive to others that might seem not very many but uh, we've got some very rare varieties from MI Gardener. We've got some not so rare varieties. Uh, Holly's going to go over just a, a name a few of them and, and the purpose of them. Then we're going to talk uh, real s briefly on the planting and uh, planting techniques on how to grow these things. So we, we grow lemon cucumbers, which are they're neat little cucumbers. They're yellow. They look like little baseballs. And, and, you don't, they, and you don't see them in the store because they have a very short shelf life. You'll see them at farmer's markets, but not in the convenient grocery store. And they do... I wouldn't say they taste like lemons. There's a little more sweetness to no, them. Little, no, it's a little more tartness. Oh, I tartness, think. tartness, yeah. yes, tartness. Yeah, so those are kind of fun to grow. And then we have... And it messes people up when they see them. Right, because they're like, are those, what are those? What are, yeah, what are those? Conversation piece, yeah. So then we have the little potato cucumber. That's new to us. It really does kind of look like a potato. But when you cut it open, it has the fragrance or the, the taste of a cucumber. Right. That's a rare variety that we're growing. And then for pickling, we're going to grow, we grow some regular pickling cucumbers, which is Boston, uh, Boston. Pop, Boston pickling, but we're going to grow these. They're called Wisconsin SMR pickling. Uh, anytime Holly sees uh, a Wisconsin oh, variety, shut up. Uh, uh, she always <laughs> wants to grab it. Yeah. And the, well, it says it for a reason. I, I know. Uh, then the, there's a white wonder cucumber, and it is a white cucumber. It, yeah, it, it's a white cucumber, and we've been advised that those are very good for eating. Do not pickle them. Do not try to can them because, the, quote from uh, M.I. Gardner, they look like elephant toes whenever you pickle them because they turn very gray. Tasty. Uh, but we're going to eat them raw, or you right. can actually juice them. It, it works either way. So then we have the Armenian yard-long cucumber, and they're supposed to get a yard long, 30, so we'll have to find yep. out. Hopefully they don't get too uh too heavy woody or or, or woody. heavy well they won't get woody they're going to get heavy if we grow them on the trellis right. they, there's a lot of weight on a 36 30 uh 30 uh, uh you know, yard long bean and then there's the these uh alpha cucumbers they look like uh those english seedless cucumbers to me but supposedly they're supposed to be really refreshing so the number one key when it comes to growing cucumbers and most varieties of vegetables and fruits is we need full sun we need good soil and we need full sun so we've got full sun where we're going to plant these. And if you want to find more information, you can uh, visit the website 7 p.m. Tuesday night where we'll have the, our weekly video on all of this, on uh, growing uh, cucumbers, peppers, as well as uh, planting the yacons. But let's talk here. Full sun, good and rich soil, worked the soil, loose soil. You don't want to plant these in clay soil because it doesn't work because the roots have to have places to expand and grow. Right. So, so you want to plant these. The, the package says about a foot apart. Uh, we really, realistically, we go um, six inches apart, six to eight inches, because we intensive plant. We cram more in to get more. Uh, we cram more in because we got good enriched soil. We know the plants can sustain themselves, and sometimes, uh, based on the article that you read, and you know, there's a lot of information out there. You can uh, fertilize these halfway through, or every two to three weeks. During the growing season, uh, they'll take 55 to 70 days for most cucumbers to reach a, a mature, blooming, uh, fruiting state. So if you if you are in the city and you have you don't have a lot of space, you can definitely trellis your cucumbers. I think it's a good idea to trellis any any crop that you possibly can. It gets it off the ground. You can see it. You can see it. You can see any problems that may come up. And you, and you don't have that one cucumber that you've missed three weeks ago, and it's a you know humongous mass, and it's no good. It's all bitter because it's gone to seed. Right. And with these cucumbers, and and I've I've told this story multiple times on the program. If you're going to grow something, you have to continually harvest, or the plant will go into a seed production state and stop producing fruit once it's got a a, a fruit or bean that has reached a state of mature seeds, it'll shut the plant down because that's its goal. It's not to feed you. It's to carry on the traits for the following generations. Right. So you have that. And then you also want to, if you have problems with your cucumbers starting out funny and you get these oddly shaped cucumbers or you have ones that kind of have a point on the tapered, end. Tapered point. Like a tapered to, yeah. point. For one, you want to make sure you're consistently watering cucumbers and you want to make sure you have good nutrients in your soil. It's always important no matter what you're growing. But also you are having a possible lack of pollination. 
what happens with the plant? Plants are only growing because they're only growing because they want to survive. That's their purpose. They're not growing because we want to eat them. That's not that's not their uh, their scientific makeup. So pan- when plants are when the cucumbers are growing, they're going to put out some male flowers, and this, these are tester flowers. They're going to see if there's active pollination. And you'll see them. The male flowers will come out about a week to two weeks before you the female flowers, and they'll just be a stem with a flower on. The female flowers later will come out, and you'll see the little fruit behind uh, the flower will be attached to. So that's the differentiation between the two. Right. So it's the first set of flowers that come out uh, on the cucumber plant, and so it's testing for pollination. If there's good pollination in the area, those cucumbers are going to put on a lot more female flowers in the next couple of weeks. If there's not, then they're going to put on very few. And that's why a lot of people have problems with getting kind of funny looking cucumbers is because your plant is only doing what it, what it needs to do to survive and feel like it's going to reproduce. So what you can do is you can like take go to each one of those flowers, take your finger to it and just tap it so that cucumber thinks that it's getting pollinated. And you can also bring pollinators in. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago on the program, pollinators that are other than bees. But plant flowers uh, in your garden to attract these beneficial pollinators, beneficial insects in that uh, will help uh, get these fruits and vegetables to uh, pollinate better. Some of them are self-pollinating. Cucumbers are not. Uh, there are some varieties of cucumbers which are self-pollinating, but the mass of, majority of them have to have a pollination process that occurs in Correct. them. So just keep that in mind that you have to think about how your, your plants are growing sometimes. And in that case, you know, pollinators are good for everything in your garden. and It's not a bad thing to bring in things to, to attract those pollinators. So full sun, enriched soil. We plant them six to eight inches apart. You can, the, the back of the package says a foot. You want to uh, keep them, we, we recommend mulching to prevent soil splash up on the leaves. Uh, one problem you will get later on in the season is powdery mildew, and that's because the moisture on the leaves are not drying out, and a mold is forming or a mildew is forming that uh, actually hinders the growth and actually can su- suffocate the plant out and kill it. Uh, some people will say, oh, what, what is it, at the end of August, sep- early September, their plants begin to die out? That's just the life cycle yeah. of the cucumber. They're not, they're not like where tomatoes are going to keep growing until it... You know, vine tomatoes are going to keep growing until it frosts or freezes. Cucumbers have a certain life cycle, and then that's about it. If you want to prolong, plant them, for example, today. Wait until about the third week in June. Plant another uh, mass, uh, another amount of cucumbers so you have a continual harvest. And, you know, a cucumber plant, um, we had, uh, I don't know how many cucumbers, but a cucumber plant will produce a, a plenty of cucumbers for a family of four if you're just going to go with the strictly eating them. If you're going to go with pickling them, uh, that's why we plant so many varieties and, and so mass quantities of them because you can pickle them. You can also make uh, cucumber relish, which we have chosen to focus on zucchini relish. We find that to be much more tasty than the cucumber relish. Right. But, but you can make uh, sweet, you know, sweet cucumber pickles. Right. And but but we want to we want to mulch them. Yeah. Right. And full sun and trellising if if possible, and uh, you don't have to worry about how warm the soil is. You can go ahead and plant them now; they'll be fine. If you do want to be concerned with that, uh, you need to, the soil to be about sixty degrees or ish, really on the safe side. But plant them today; they'll be fine without any problems. So uh, you got to keep them some things in mind. You just can't just throw seeds in the ground and expect things to grow. Some of these things need a little finesse and a little uh, upfront work, just like, um, just like anything in life, uh, whether you're canning or you're uh, vacuuming. If you don't have a good piece of equipment or you don't have the right equipment, your job, it, it, it doesn't go well. And you're a canner and you know you've got to have the right equipment, otherwise it doesn't you're not doing it right. Right. And mowing the grass is the same thing. Maybe you don't like mowing grass. Maybe you don't have a good piece of equipment. And maybe if you did have a good piece of equipment, that job would be a little less tedious and a little more enjoyable. And errands can help you out with that. Do you hear that? That's your neighbor shaking in their grass stained shoes because Aaron's about to help you step up your grass cutting game. Your name is on the mailbox, so the Aaron's name should be on your mower. Heavy duty steel construction, smarter, smoother controls. Professional cutting performance. The only thing we love more than the smell of freshly cut grass is the sweet taste of victory. Aaron's, it comes down to this. Visit Aaron's.com to find your local dealer for lawn and snow removal equipment. Well, when we come back, the popular, very popular, well-known gardener named the plant doctor, Melinda Myers, will be with us right after this. Tweet Joey and Holly using hashtag TWVG. Oh, yeah. 
you say? You say nasala kombucha. It'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step. Nasala kombucha. <laughs> yeah. Nasala kombucha makes your body happy. Nasala kombucha makes your body smile. Really Granola is a small batch Wisconsin-made granola available at reallygranola.com. This granola uses many organic ingredients and features Wisconsin products such as beautiful red Wisconsin cranberries, local honey, and other delicious Wisconsin products. You'll find plenty of fiber and protein in Really Granola, which makes it a great way to start or end your day. This granola is baked in a Wisconsin co-packing kitchen that helps to employ disabled workers. Find Really Granola near you or to buy online, visit reallygranola.com. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from plantsuccess.com that will greatly increase your plant germination, ability, and a healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponics, root cut seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. Plantsuccess.com carries powder, granule, and tablet forms of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil for your plants to give them the optimal opportunity to produce an incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit plantsuccess.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. With over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom and organic, flower, vegetable and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and gardening needs, tools and special blend fertilizer. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Uh, it is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 896 videos, and a whole lot more. We encourage you to go over there. You can navigate through. Let us know what you think. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into it. You can also sign up for a weekly email. Well, we were at Blue Mills this past Thursday for our Straw Bell Garden Talk, and we uh, went across and looked at the Garden Center, which we've been there several times. They've got everything. If you haven't got your tomatoes yet, you can go out there and get them today. They've got 22 varieties of heirloom, organic, uh, non-GMO, uh, tomatoes, eggplants, uh, all kinds of herbs that you can imagine, a lot of nat- native plants. We purchased a cherry dwarf bush tree there. And then they have all your flowering plants, all your hanging baskets, anything you want to spruce up your yard, your uh, wherever, your house. Largest wherever. bulk availability of mulch, compost, and sand in the city. Uh, if you can't find it there, you're probably not going to find it there uh, and you anywhere. And you might actually run into the owner when you're there, too, because yeah. he works right there yeah. in the building. Yeah. All right, so Blue Mills, you can find it at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. And you can also visit them at bluemills.com or go... Call 414-282-4220. The official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, and we appreciate their support, and we uh, thank them, and we thank you for visiting them and supporting them. So let's bring in our next guest, Holly. So we have a nationally known gardening expert, TV host, and author, columnist Melinda Myers, has over 30 years of horticulture experience, has written over 20 gardening books. She hosts the nationally syndicated Melinda Gar- Melinda's Garden Moment program, which airs on over 125 TV and radio shows throughout the U.S. Latest books include Midwest Gardener's Handbook, Minnesota and Wisconsin Getting Started Garden Guide, Minnesota Wisconsin Month by Month Gardening, and DVD sets the great courses How to Grow Anything DVD series, including the latest Food Gardening for Everyone DVD set. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Program, Melinda Myers. Thanks. It's always good to talk to you guys and your listeners and talk gardening on this great planting weekend. Finally, a warm, sunny day, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, uh, With being a Memorial Day weekend, people are planting tomatoes, and it's a good time to plant them. That's what we've always done. We went over this last week, some of the planting techniques in which we practice and have good success. What are are some things that, um, what are some of your go-to planting techniques for tomatoes for optimal uh, harvest come later in July, early August? One of the things is, Soil temperature and air temperature, and this spring is a perfect example. Memorial Day is the traditional planting day, but with a cool spring like we've had, the soil's still pretty cool, and 
it got down to 49 degrees at my house last night. And so even though it won't kill your tomato plants, it really does stunt them and slow them. In fact, last year we saw some leaf spotting, and it was all due to cooler temperatures. So a couple things you can do. Um, Wait, which is really hard for all of us. Get the plants this weekend because you'll have the best selection. And if you do pop them in the ground, consider covering them with a row cover. You know, I'll use either um, a wall of water or floating row covers even through June. And the reason is our nights can get so cool. If you keep those plants a little toastier in the evening, you're going to get an earlier harvest and see um, better results throughout the season. So giving your plants a little extra protection early in the season, it is Wisconsin. We never know what the weather's going to do. Um, if you give them that little extra protection, I find that works. I'm a low input gardener, so I like to use tomato towers. I find those are easy. You put them on, and the only pruning I do is when branches go astray. Okay, that makes sense. Now, there's a lot of different ways to garden. You create a garden using the lasagna method. Can you explain to our gardeners what this technique entails? You bet. So lasagna gardening, it's not about growing the herbs for your lasagna dish. Your favorite recipe is so many people go, oh, you're growing lasagna. We did a video on it, and the whole crew was really excited until they saw me bring bags of leaves and, <laughs> and twigs, and they went, wait a minute, where's the good stuff? So it's basically composting to create a garden. So let's say your garden is four by eight. So you mark out that area, put a layer of either newspaper or cardboard on the bottom, and that will help prevent weeds and, you know, that nice barrier. Eight to ten inches of anything you put in your compost pile. So, you know, vegetable scraps, you can do fall leaves. You know, we all seem to have them all year. It seems they blow in from who knows where. Do about eight to ten inches. Spread some compost over that. Sprinkle in some fertilizer. And, of course, I'd recommend Milorganite. Another eight to ten inches until you keep layering, just like lasagna, until you have um, about an 18 to 24 inch high bed. And then the good news is you can plant right away. And I usually plant right away, and I've had some of the best peppers, great tomato harvest, good greens coming through. And so it's an excellent way to really fix your soil immediately. Um, I gardened in the city of Milwaukee for 26 years, and I worked my soil and had great soil that I couldn't take with me. Now I'm in sand and rock country, a little bit older, and thinking, I don't have a lot of time to really, you know, get my soil ready. I don't have those 26 years. So I'm constantly amending, mulching with organic matter. But I found lasagna gardening gave me a great base for my garden. Plus, the second year, those gardens had fewer weeds than the surrounding area. So that, after last year's weedy year, boy, I'm sold on the method. So it's really how I'm establishing a lot of my new garden beds. Um, in my planting area where we shoot video and photography and, of course, grow things to eat in our own home. Now, people who understand composting, they would believe that compost should heat up. You don't have to worry about the the, con- <clears throat> the contents in that lasagna bed heating up and burning the roots, do you? No, and that's one of the really amazing things about it because I had a lot of people, well, you can't plant immediately. I said, I have. I've done this three years in a row, starting new beds, planting second-year beds, and never had a problem with the heat. Um, the other thing to consider is you can start it in the fall. So let's say you're like, oh, I don't have time. I just need to get the plants in the ground. I don't have the raw materials. And it, often it's fall when we have more leaves and more vegetable, you know, the outer leaves of the lettuce that weren't good enough to eat, those kind of things. And so a lot of people will do their lasagna bed in the fall, let it kind of cook a bit so it will settle and plant in the spring. Either way works fine. Well, you live on now, you talked about rocky and clay soil. You live on an 11-acre area now, and you still focus on containers. Now, for most people who are listening, they think, they they (laughs) probably are thinking, if I'm on 11 acres, I'm I'm ditching the the containers. Why do you still focus on the containers? Well, you know, I think it's a couple reasons. Um, I love to have my garden close to my house, and maybe that's all those years in the city, but... I like to have pots that bring in the butterflies and hummingbirds right to my window so I can have, I can enjoy them when I'm either sitting on the patio or inside looking out. 
I also like to have herbs in some of my favorite um, smaller vegetables, some peppers and tomatoes close at hand, because I find when I'm cooking, I always forget something. Or, you know, we're doing potatoes on the grill, and I just can step outside, clip some chives, and I'm set. And so I find it very convenient. And it's a good place to try new plants before you put them in the ground. You know, you read the ads, and these, this plant's going to be beautiful. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. You know, you buy a flat of them. You put them in the garden, and you go, oh, a little underwhelmed. Well, this way, I can try a few, try combinations, try the plant, and then I can say, oh, I like that. I want to do more. Or, you know what, this plant belongs in a container. I don't need 20 of them to fill a garden. And so it's a good way to test new plants, try new combinations. And so I think it's a good strategy for all of us. And if you're growing mint, uh, containers is the only (laughs) option. And preferably on a cement patio, just so you're not taking any chances. Good point. Well, a lot of people have limited space in the backyard, but have lots of space in the front yard, but may not be more along the lines, uh, uh, they want to be too obvious with their growing vegetables there. What are some good edibles to grow that won't be too obvious uh, more along the lines of edible landscaping? You know, that's such a great question and such a trend. Um, in the late 70s, early 80s, when I was working with Extension, we had a, it was kind of the same things were happening. People were trying to save money. They were putting vegetables in the front yard. But the good news is now, as you mentioned, there are so many new varieties that are prettier. And a lot of us find vegetables beautiful, but maybe our neighbors don't. So a couple things you might want to do. I think eggplants are beautiful. And I've always grown them for their beauty. And now All America Selection, which is an organization that evaluates vegetables and flowers for their suitability for the home garden. And so they're also judging eggplant by their beauty as well as edibility. So Hansel and Gretel are finger-type eggplants. They're only about six inches long and narrow. And so one's white and one's purple. I can never remember which one's which. Um, But what's nice about them is, you know, eggplant, if you leave them on the plant too long, they get mealy. And if you pick them too early, they're kind of rubbery. And so the nice part about Hansel and Gretel, not only are they compact and beautiful, But if you, let's say, are gone for the weekend and they reach maturity, they'll still be good for another five or seven days. So those are compact and pretty purple flowers, colorful fruit. The undersides of the leaves have that purplish cast, so that's nice. A lot of our tomatoes are very nice ones, too. You know, like doing window box Roma would be a nice option if you've got small space, you can get Roma paste tomatoes on a smaller plant. And so blending it with flowers would be a good option. Um, Sweetheart of the Patio is a cascading type, just like Tumbling Tom is a yellow uh, cascading tomato. And what's cool about those is you could put them in a hanging basket and have it hanging from your you know, front entryway or a shepherd's crook in the garden so that instead of doing you know, a basket of, you know, petunias, you've got something edible. And once they start fruiting, they're just as beautiful. Um, I also like some of the compact tomatoes that are out there as well. You know, Bush Early Girl's been around for a while, but it's nice and small. And so just looking for more compact varieties, peppers, let's talk peppers. There's yellow-fruited, purple-fruited, red-fruited, orange-fruited. And if you price sweet peppers, in the garden, in the grocery store, you know you pay a lot for that red pepper. Well, you can put it in your flower bed or your front garden and have the beauty of the fruit, and that's a great way to improve your the beauty of your garden. And those hot peppers are always nice. So one of the things I like to do is mix herbs, texture and fragrance, good for good for seasoning your your dishes, but also very pretty and flowers and with my vegetables. I think. Too often we think it's an all or nothing. And that goes with containers, right? You know, a pot, a big five-gallon pot with a tomato, you know, put something, you know, a calibrico, a cascading over the edge, maybe a purple basil or oregano, you know, make it as pretty as you would flowering plants. And that's a great way to have a beautiful display, whether it's in the ground or in your container. 
Well, as Holly inter- uh, talked about in the introduction, you've wrote no- you've wrote over twenty books, and you've got a number of DVDs available for purchase. Uh, where can people find your books and your DVDs? And uh, briefly, what is one of the most uh, in what was one of the most enjoyable books that, of those twenty that you wrote? Well, um, my books are available at most uh, garden centers and bookstores, and of course online. Um, you can always check my website, melindamyers.com, and we can get you links to some of those places. Great Courses DVDs. Um, it's through Great Courses, the Great Courses, and we have a link from my website, melindamyers.com. And always, I always tell people, watch for the specials, because they usually go on special and make them more affordable. But I've got food gardening, tree and shrub care, designing landscapes, containers, so things to help you along the way. Probably I have two favorite books, and one was uh, The Birds in Bloom Ultimate Garden Guide, and unfortunately it's out of print, but the reason I liked it is I got to build the book like a garden, and I remember meeting with my editor, and I said, I want to start with soil, that's the foundation of the garden, and he goes, really? Soil? How unexciting. And uh, he let me build the garden from the ground up and the book from the ground up. So that I loved. And then small space, because I was a small space gardener for 26 years. And I learned so many things I wanted to pass along. And I had a fun editor who got my sense of humor, which, not a, you know, you know, gardeners, we have a weird sense of humor. And we all get each other, but not everybody gets us. And so that was a lot of fun to do, sharing what I've learned along the way, working with really a fun editor and and trying to help people get excited about gardening. Well, thank you very much, Melinda, for taking a little bit of time out of your, I know your very busy schedule to uh, share some of your garden wisdom with Holly, myself, and, and our listeners today. My pleasure, and I'm getting ready to do a workshop at Ebert's Garden Center on managing insects and disease in the landscape, getting people ready. So. Hopefully they won't need my advice later because the garden will be growing successfully. So you guys have a great uh, weekend as well. Well, thank thank you you very much. And we'll be back right after this with your garden questions and our garden answers. Have a gardening question? You can call into the iborganic.com hotline at 414-444-5250 right now. Mantis Plant Protection Professional Grade Organic Pest Control Solutions. They offer Mantis EC concentrated or ready to use spray, certified organic and environmentally friendly insect killer, gentle on pollinators and other organisms, but effective in killing soft bodied insects and spider mites fast. Safe around your children and pets. They also have the cleanest and whitest diatomaceous earth on the market. Visit mantispp.com to receive a free organic pesticide cheat sheet, which is a list of organic insecticides that are used effectively and kill insects fast. Visit mantispp.com to download it today. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. I support by name at your local independent Garden Center. Find out more, visit bobex.com. B O B B E X dot C O M. The international food selection at Woodman's is more than just salsa and soy sauce. We stock a huge selection of foods and ingredients from all over the world. Whether it's Asian, Latin American, European, or Middle Eastern, Woodman's has it. Plus, each store has its own unique selection. With Woodman's, you don't need to visit multiple stores to get what you need. We have everything you need under one roof and at a great price. Do you want your next raised beds to be easy, functional, and beautiful? The Embrace helps you create the garden you've always wanted. Finally, raised beds that everyone can assemble and enjoy. No tools needed. Just slide any lumber into the Embrace corner, fill with your favorite soil mix, and you're ready to plant. Made from 100% recycled steel right here in the USA. And a portion of every sale helps to build school and community gardens all across the country. Let the Embrace help you create your next raised bed. Grow beautiful. 
beautifully with the Embrace. Available at local garden centers and online at artofthegarden.net. Hi, I'm John Lewandowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mel's is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, come to Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Well, if, if I know so much, how come I ain't rich? <laughs> Some of the wealthiest people are the ones with the least amount of money, Mike. Oh, I, that, can I write that down? Yeah, that, that's, that's yours. You can use that. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Uh, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, your destination for all things gardening. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, eight hundred ninety six videos. That was from a conversation from Mr. Mike Novak from uh, Chicago Talk Radio last week. If you want to revisit that, you can click uh, and click on the radio tab on the website uh, for that interview and uh, the segments of that. And we'll be on his program tomorrow morning at nine fifteen uh, out of Chicago. So, so if you have any questions, it, here's our question and answer time, or any time throughout the show, you can call in the Ivy Organic hotline at 414-444-5250. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. Again, that's 444-5250. 414-444-5250. We had a number of questions come in. You can submit them at any time at twvgradio at gmail.com, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Facebook page, Instagram, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, Twitter, uh, Garden Media, all kinds of stuff. You can find all that on our website. So what are some of these questions that we had, Holly? So the first one is, are there any rabbit critter repellents you'd recommend for a vegetable gardener garden? I have four raised beds that I would rather not put a fence around. We have problems mostly with rabbits and voles. Well, Bob X the, uh, is an animal repellent. It's a sponsor uh, of the program here, and it absolutely works. It's an all-natural uh, animal repellent that has a very high, potent uh, peppermint smell and it doesn't wash off. It's not something you want to open in the presence of loved ones or indoors uh, because uh, it does have a very s potent smell. We're going to use some more around uh, a new area that we had. We've, we've had chipmunks digging in some of our raised beds. We've applied this. We haven't seen the chipmunks in. So they've gone to the neighbors, apparently. So that's fine. So you, uh, Bob X, uh, BobX.com is what you want to look for. And a lot of independent garden centers carry that product as well. So since we often talk about mulch, we have a mulch question here. It was recommended to me that I should mulch around my tomato plants, but not to use wood chips. I, do have, I don't have any leaves left from last fall, so I was wondering if straw, like the kind they use for starting grass, would be okay. Straw would be perfectly fine for mulching around tomatoes. Even dry, chemical-free weed seed grass clippings will work. Uh, the reason why you do not want to use wood chips, and it's two-part reason. One, wood chips are going to eventually break down, and you're in the edible garden, so at some point there's going to be some soil disturbance where that wood chip is going to mix into the soil, and as wood chips biodegrade, they rob the soil of nitrogen, as well as the University of Madison has done studies to where wood chips from trees that have certain diseases, and I don't know the exact scientific diseases, uh, even a year after the wood, uh, after the tree has been chipped, you bring it into your garden, and those chemical, those, those diseases are deadly to broadleaf plants like peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes. So that's another problem that you can have by introducing wood chips into your edible garden. So you just want to avoid that, uh, unless it's a perennial garden like a, a asparagus bed or around rhubarb or something like that, that's fine. But when you're looking in a, a bed where you're going to work the soil mostly on a regular basis, you want to avoid the wood chips. Straw works just fine. You can get that at Blue Mills. Okay, so what gnaws on radishes under the ground? Well, there's a, there's a number, there's an insect that can cause the radish to have, like, you know, gnaw or pieces on it. Root maggots. Root maggots is what so it is. So they're little maggots, and uh, they're, like, th as we can imagine, what maggots look like. And this happens more as the warm weather and the soil warms up uh, 
uh, during the summer. That's why you can't really grow uh, turnips and rutabagas and uh, radishes in the spring t- or in the summer because those maggots uh, eat those roots. Now there are some ways to limit the maggot magnet maggots from eating the roots. So you could they. What happens is that this this uh, insect comes and lays their larva next to your plants. And then those larvae go into the soil, and then they eat your radishes. So what you can do is you can take lime or wood ash around the base of your radish plants once they become, once they start to uh, germinate. And you can also uh, plant these radishes early spring, late fall. 30 days, you've got radishes. And if you let your radishes go to seed, the, uh, the, the green pod that they produce when they put a flower on or a seed pod on, those green pods in the green pod state are edible and they taste just like radishes. But when they allow it to dry, they contain five to seven seeds per pod. Uh, what, let's talk about, uh, Brandon's got a question about peppers. Do you, top, do you top your pepper plants to encourage multiple main stems and low bushy growth? This is a common practice for many gardeners. Uh, they'll either start their pepper plants or they'll purchase them from places like Blue Mills and they'll top, uh, cut the growth tip out of the center of it. And this does encourage more side branching, more bushier plant, more, leaf st- uh, more limb structure, which in turn creates more opportunity for more peppers to form. We have uh, played around with it a little bit. We've never... Uh, done okay I've got 30 plants I'm going to top them all so we played around with a little bit this year I have seen uh, some additional growth on those pepper plants because of the topping of them but if uh, you're new to gardening it it will scare you to death because you're thinking I'm going to kill the plant by cutting uh, the top you know inch or two off the plant but it does work and it does create more bushiness and if you're going to do that you really want to do that about a month or two before you put them well about 30 days before you actually intend to put them in the ground uh, because you don't want to put them in a shock state when you transplant them into the ground. What's another one we have? Number 10. Let's, oh, okay. let's, uh, you ha- we had this question last week, and, and we didn't get to it. All right, so a good natural way to prevent weeds. Um, the, garden is, the garden is typically overrun with weeds. Her husband puts in compost every year, tills it in, puts grass clippings in while he tills it in, and then the weeds just happen. Well, here's what's occurring, and, and I'm going to explain this uh, briefly but thoroughly. Weeds, uh, a lot, most weeds propagate from root particles. So if you go in there and you've got weeds in your garden, like a, like a lawn, and you go in there and you till all of this up, what you're doing with the tiller is chopping the root particle, uh, chopping the roots into multiple particles. So it looks really nice. You rake it off. You get all the green stuff off. It looks like a nice, beautiful garden. Two weeks later, all of a sudden, it's now a lush green blanket of weeds. Well, what has occurred is all those particles of roots in which you have chopped up has now re-sprouted. And instead of having one plant that you would have extracted that has a big cluster of roots, you now have 8, 9, 15, 20 particles of roots that have now established themselves as uh, or, or di- of, 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 of weeds. So you want to go in there and remove roots and the top growth of the plant in order to minim- uh, minimal, uh, minimize the amount of weeds you have. It's a tedious process, yes. Uh, we, I spent many hours last year doing this in our large garden you, that you see on the video. But by spending that time last year, by removing those large root clusters or clumps, the weeds that we have now in the spring are minimal, very minimal, maybe 10% of what we had a year ago. And it's just very easy to go in there with a garden fork, pop up the weeds that do that have appeared, and it works very well. Now, if you till on a regular basis, and it's worked for you, and this is something that you don't want to spend the time in uh, weeding manually with a garden fork, then continue to till. But I'm just giving you the reasons why there are so many weeds that you have in your garden and why when you till it seems like there are more weeds in the garden what would be a uh, another question here uh, and and today you know with, we talked to Melinda there about the tomatoes and planting uh, we, we've I've gotten this past week I got 18 tomato uh, no 18 20, 27 tomato plants of the about 56 I've, I want to put in and they're doing fine uh, so it is a little chilly, but I would go ahead and, and go ahead if the plants are hardened off, go ahead and put them in the ground, and there'll be no problem whatsoever. And when you're planting your tomatoes, you want to make sure you plant them deep, and you, uh, you can pinch the lower branches off, as we mentioned last week. Yep, you can revisit that on you the can website. Definitely revisit that. Yeah. So let's see here, growing celery roots from seed. Okay, so celery roots from seed. 
um, how, how do you make it successful? I end up having a bunch of leaves. Is there any trick how to do it? Uh, well, uh, you want a lot of leaves on your celery. Uh, just start it from seed, plant it uh, like you would normally, a uh, normal plant in the container, and, it, uh, and then plant it in the ground. It'll be fine. It'll take you know, 90 days to reach a mature state. Well, people uh, listen to this program each week. They get a lot of information, and the reason why we're here is because of sponsors that make this show possible. Nacelle Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Nacelle is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nacelle Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more at nacelle.com. Well, uh, join us next week, programming note. Uh, we're going to talk about planting plants in your vegetable garden that you didn't think you could grow because they take up too much space. Four tips on planting your bushes and trees before you put them in the ground, as well as Bree Author, author of Foodscape Revolution Author, will be with us. Miss any portion of this show or want to revisit it? Check out the radio tab on the website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com. For Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and until next week, we will see you in the garden. <laughs>